Hi, this is Jess uh, from Kentucky to Tokyo. Welcome to the channel, which has for some reason become like a news channel uh, in the past like five videos or so. Eh. Um, yeah, so today is another Japan news video specifically. I'm talking about everything I can find for the Japan news roundup. So uh, to start off with stats. So according to the COVID19Japan.com website, right now we have over 15,000 confirmed cases. Exactly here we have 15,096 cases uh, confirmed. And then we have the recovered levels. The recovered levels, there are 14, uh, no, sorry, no, <laughs> that's wrong. 4,725 cases have been recovered. So people who have been released from the hospital. Deaths are 538. So that's 3% of total cases, which is in line with coronavirus. Coronavirus generally um, kills 2 to 3% of the people who are confirmed infected. So active, uh, active cases right now are 9,833. 3% are in critical condition, which once again, that is very likely with the coronavirus. Uh, in total, right now, 184,586 people. 8% of the results are positive. Um, so you might, if you're from an America or a European like place, you might be like, that's a low number for testing. Yeah, it is. There are a lot of countries that are talking about the fact that Japan is highly under testing. Mm. And right now there's a little bit of an issue, right, with the SoftBank, which is my service provider. So, hey, okay. uh, the SoftBank CEO uh, guy got private testing for all of his employees to find out if they are positive or negative somehow. Um, yeah, so that's a thing. But like drive up testing is kind of still there, but not great. Uh, also, there was a time in the past week where it looked as if we were having another like downward incline, like I think, uh, yeah, like at the beginning of May. And then for whatever reason, oh no, it spiked. It's because there was a backlog of cases and then they were all tested. And then of course they found more positive people. Fun facts. So basically the way the graphs look right now is kind of like a because this is how the virus generally around the world, it's kind of trended that way. There's an increase in spikes and then governments do regulations where they do another lockdown and then there's a decrease. And then of course there's a, oh, well, everything seems safe. So we're going to open back up again. And then there's another spike in cases and so it, it's gonna come probably in waves too if it's anything like how it's been in America how it's been in like Europe nation European nations and how it's been like in Korea and other countries Korea is actually doing really good right now actually uh, but still I I've heard from my friends that they're still not going to school <laughs> they haven't been to school in February I believe like it's been so February January, February March April May so it's been four months four months of no school Speaking of uh, no school, so the national lockdown, which was put in place all of a week ago, week and a half ago, uh, the national one has been extended until May 31st. So when, according to Japan Today with Abe, uh, he is saying that it's expanding that way, it's going to go that way. However, um, it's going to be one of those things where we're still going to need cooperation from people because we still don't have a hard lockdown. As a matter of fact, according to the Mainichi, uh, the reop there's there's reopening of parks, museums, libraries, and some other public facilities, even in areas with a relatively high number of coronavirus infections. Who oh boy! So yeah, according to the Mainichi, it's to as a part of efforts to deal with public weariness with a prolonged state of emergency. So this comes from the economic revitalization minister. So Yatsutoshi Nishimura, thanks. Uh, and time.com actually just did like a thing on with it where they talked about how people are so confused in Japan about is this a big deal or is it not a big deal because the messages have been so mixed from the top down decisions and this is a very good a very good example of that we have oh it's a national lockdown oh we don't have schools open oh we don't have we still want transportation to be down 80 percent and it has 
not been down 80%. It has been down 30, 40, 50, depending on the day we're talking about, but it's never, never quite reached 80 in Tokyo. It's exhausting, honestly, to watch and read the news. I watch on the live updates of things and it's kind of just repetitive. It's like, oh, please don't do the 3C clusters. Oh, please, like, try not to go to work. It's so much a please do as we say. We're not gonna actually make you, but please do as we say. Again, the laws were ratified. So them pretending as if they can't do anything, as if like, oh, well, the government, it's out of our hands. It's just not true. According to the infectious diseases laws that they ratified and according to the influenza laws, which were ratified, they could shut down transportation for like three days. They could just shut it down and then extend it and extend it. And they could have a week where nobody fucking goes anywhere. And we could try and get this a little bit like farther down, but no because that's not what we do here. On some good news though, the fact that there is a relatively low death toll, there is some speculation. There's speculation according to both Japan Today and like CNN.com was talking about this. Japan is one of those countries that requires a tuberculosis um, vaccine. So the tuberculosis vaccine might actually be something that's helping to keep people like for some reason because the coronavirus attacks your lungs, you know, in the most extreme cases, somehow having this vaccine might maybe prevent fatalities from coronavirus. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't like have the fever, the coughing and like the whole mild case problem, but the fatality rate is significantly lower, possibly because of this reason. However, once again, it's, it's speculation. A lot of people have gone and run to the clinics to try and go and get this uh, TB vaccine and thinking that like, oh, it's a preventative measure. Well, yes, but vaccines don't work that way. Um, you can't just go and get it and then, oh, it's it, because you don't know if you have it or not, basically, or you might have already had it and then it's kind of just a waste. So it's better to just stay inside. Don't go to work. Or if you go to work, go home. Don't go to restaurants, don't go to parks, don't go to museums, don't go out in public flatten the curve. <sighs> so the reason that we really need to flatten the curve, of course, in Japan is because Japan's medical care facilities are already overwhelmed. Um, there are, according to Japan Today, where it talked about the extended, um, so this, uh, this headline, Abe extends virus state of emergency until May 31st. Like, in this article at the very end, <laughs> it's like, it's almost like you read it and you miss it. There are only five ICU beds per per 100,000 people in Japan. That's, that's it. That's all you get. And then that's less than half the number in Italy. So doctors, associations, and health ministry, they're all really worried about if there is another spike and in increase, uh, like an increase spiked in cases that they really don't have the beds and they don't have enough of the ICU beds specifically to help people who are suffering from COVID-19, especially the extreme cases where they need to intubate. So yeah, it could be a situation also where like in America, the intubation process, you need to have a certain amount of like, you need to have anesthesiologists, you need to have people there who can give you drugs so that you don't, you know, feel it. And also, so you will pass out. And they're running out of those drugs in America. Like certain hospitals just don't have them or they have to ration them. And of course, rationing the um, the medical supplies that you have to have masks and things. In Japan, they're also starting to run into those and people are sending masks to hospitals and to nursery schools and to things like that to try and help. But yeah, it's there's like a global, if you think about it, really, it's a global shortage. It's a global shortage of very much needed and necessary medical equipment. And it's a race to get those when you are really in desperate need of it. So yeah, so that's what's going on there. Not to scare people, but that is what's going on right now. Um, also, uh, when it comes to the overwhelming things, ca cases of patients being turned away uh, increases up to fivefold over virus, according to the Mainichi. This was on May 3rd. 
So this is really uh, really close uh, and updated. So cases of hospitals in Japan turning away patients by ambulance. So there have been several stories actually on Twitter and on Facebook of people who were in an ambulance ride for two hours or three hours or four hours um, and they were being rejected by hospital after hospital after hospital um, to not come in because they were suspected COVID-19 positive patients. Um, the reason for this is kind of complicated, but basically like in Japan, there are certain hospitals that have emergency rooms, right? But the hospitals are not always necessarily going to have ICU beds and they're not always necessarily going to have infectious diseases and um, epidemics, uh, I forget what, uh, epidemic uh, like wings, like specifically designed for say COVID-19 to prevent infection going throughout the rest of the hospital. Um, Suginami Hospital actually, uh, according to, I think it was Japan Today, I think I read that story, uh, it actually has tents outside of its hospital because it's so overwhelmed inside and it's one of the few hospitals that can provide ICU beds and infectious disease like control, but it's getting to a point where they have tents outside, where they have people out in hospital beds with tents outside because they're so overwhelmed. So people are being like transported by hospital, they're suspected to be positive, they're being rejected because not all hospitals have ICU, not all hospitals can can, can control infectious diseases. And then on top of that, um, not all hospitals are designed to with, like even if they have an emergency wing, they're not designed specifically for say, this kind of like an intense scenario where somebody is like, needing to have a certain like intubation or some kind of protein. So yeah, that's happening. But also there just, there just is not enough beds. There just aren't, there aren't enough hospital beds right now. People with mild cases are in hospitals. They are getting transferred to hotels, but they have to go to the hospital first, get the positive case or get the negative, and then they have to go to a hotel. So regardless, people are still having to go to the hospital first and then the hotel. So there are not enough hospital beds and there's not enough, uh, yeah, there's not enough space for people. The medical facilities are also just scared. Like they're, they're increasing their wariness of like, okay, if we bring this person in and this is the kind of hospital where we are say a hospital that's for emergency care for elderly or bringing somebody in who's like really, you know, uh, at risk of killing the patients in the hospital. So not all hospitals, are, oh, that's right. Also, not all hospitals are designed the same too in Japan for taking care of somebody. So uh, a lot of foreigners, when they first get here, when they think a hospital, they think it's every hospital that has like an emergency room, but that's not the case. Hospitals sometimes here in Japan are just like local hospitals that are designed for elderly care or designed for um, just, it, kind of like specialty things, so heart or uh, what's that, allergies and things like that. So certain hospitals, they're a hospital, they have hospital beds, but they're not designed for specific kinds of care, like uh, like an ambulance running up and kind of doing that thing. So one thing I also should say to like foreign residents, be sure to check online where your nearest hospital is that has an emergency room that you could go to if you say start to develop symptoms. But even then, I would say, try to get through the hotline of the coronavirus hotline first to find out which hospitals will be taking patients with COVID-19 nearest to you. Because there is the possibility that you find out where the hospital that has an emergency room, you go there and then you're actually rejected from the hospital. So don't do that. Go through the coronavirus hotline, um, which, number here and be sure that you have the right hospital with the right emergency room that will have the proper care for you. So in a previous video I was like find the nearest one that has an emergency room. Now it's gotten to a point where it's like no find a hospital with an emergency room specifically like geared towards helping you with COVID-19. Do that. According to the Kyoto News Survey, 19 out of 32 fire departments saw an increase in the number of such cases, with that of Tokyo at 1,733, an increase of more than eightfold from 207. So this is for patients with symptoms that were shown in late April. Uh, we were talking before, I think two or three weeks ago when I did my last video, nobody was really sure um, if the foreigners would be eligible for the 100,000 yen uh, well, well, before it was 300,000 yen, but then it was decreased significantly 
to 100,000 yen instead. Uh, yes, foreigners are eligible for the 100,000 yen handout. Now, um, this the way that you can sign up to get it is you can take your my number card and you can sign up online. Now, note asterisks. Uh, there is the my number card that you have that's the paper form, not that one. You need to have the plastic with your face my number card when you do the online application form. Yeah, I don't have that. So if you don't have that, what do you do? Wait, basically. Your municipality, so your city hall, will start sending off applications by mail and they'll slip them through your mail slot. And when they do that, you are able to put in your name, you're able to put in your address and your bank account info, along with your my number card, or no, I'm sorry, with your my number information. And you send that back to City Hall and then you will be eligible for it. Now, I think I mentioned this before, I might be wrong, I might, uh, but in Japan, there have been court cases where people have applied for help similar to this in the welfare sector and they have been rejected by their municipality. There is a distinct possibility that some municipalities will choose to pay it out. And then there is a distinct possibility that some municipalities specifically for foreign residents won't because there have been court cases where people who have tried to get say unemployment help or say pension help from the local government and there was a court case uh, some years ago where it was decided that actually municipalities don't have the responsibility to give money unto foreign residents. So keep this in mind, like go ahead and apply, go ahead and uh, whether it's online or whether it's through your, um, your mail slot, either way, go for it. Just be aware, um, just because you are allowed to apply and you're eligible to apply, it's by each municipality, it's by each like city area, whether or not you'll actually get it. So sorry, uh, just, you know, contact your embassy though. If you are really in desperate need of help, contact your embassy. Odds are they're going to tell you to just go back to your country, but, um, you know, do, do that. Okay. And I think that's about everything for the super important information. Now, um, I like other schools to go to a very specific niche group of people who watch these, maybe, uh, the schools and whether or not your school is going to have a, you know, classes or whether it is or not. It's honestly, it's based upon right now, even though Shinzo Abe is saying no, most schools in most areas, especially the hard hit, hard hit areas are not going to have school. But once again, this is based on governor's actions and it's based upon by each prefecture. So some prefectures might open up after Golden Week and some prefectures might not. I believe Ibaraki, Chiba, and Tokyo have said no, that they're not opening up um, until uh, June, but each prefecture is different. So you will have to check online with each prefecture, with each city, um, and see like what their decisions are and see what is gonna happen. That being said, even though schools are closed, teachers will still sometimes be asked to still go into work and still be asked to do online classes or do classwork at work, like at the workplace. And in which case, the best you can do is if you can, if you're say a JET attendee, is to talk to your CIRs and talk to the JET program people. If you are not someone who's on JET program, the best you can do then is talk to your supervisor and try to figure out a way to work from home. But honestly, there's really no way to give a blanket statement for how things can work. Um, I say if you can work from home, work from home. If you have to go to work, try and find a way to limit your transportation, like your daily commute as much as you possibly can. I actually had to go into work on April 30th and I biked to and from my workplace again and that's two hours. So one hour to one hour back because I didn't want to be around people in a packed train to go to work or a bus. So I need both to get there. Do your best 
and good luck. Uh, stay safe, stay home. Try not to go outside. That's the best thing I can do. Even though right now it's a holiday time and it's golden week, stay at home. You do not want to catch this virus and you do not want to give it to somebody. It is a really, really devastating thing to get. So, uh, yeah. Uh, good luck, everybody. Oh, uh, arbitrarily, I've decided that news day is going to be Wednesday every week. So every Wednesday, I'll give it a, like, Japanese news update. And, uh, yeah, it'll give me something to do every week. And it also will help keep people informed. Okay, that's, uh, that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video next Wednesday. Peace. Bye.